Hi, my name is John Humphreys, and this is another live coding session video where we'll do a standard programming question for interviews. And uh, the basic point is I don't have the code in front of me. It's a problem I've done before in practice, and uh, we're going to see how it might go in an interview when you have to basically remember or work out a solution on the fly. We'll try to test it when we're done, and uh, hopefully it should just show you what you might go through in more of a real-life scenario than you usually see online, where people have the code in front of them while they're typing. So, anyway, um, let's cover the basics quick with a very simple diagram. <laughs> anyway, um, with permutations, you want to get every combination of letters that you could possibly have for a set. So A, B, C, D would have 24 combinations. That's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, usually you want to end up with, you know, every single combination. So A, B, C, D, B, C, D, A, A, C, B, D, every single one of them. So the general approach to this is a recursive algorithm, as with many other problems like that. And generally what you want to do is you want to kind of have two sets of letters on every iteration. The first set would be the uh, set of remaining letters you haven't chosen from. And the second set would be your prefix or the set of letters that you have chosen for the current uh, word you're building. So in our example here, if we look where the mouse is, we start out with no letters chosen. And on the first iteration, we have to choose one letter. So you'll probably do this in the for loop. You choose A or B or C or D. Assuming you're on the first iteration of that for loop, you choose A and then you'd recursively invoke the same function to with A and the remaining letters, which would be B, C, or D. And in that case, in the recursive call, the for loop's first letter chosen would be B, C, and D. And again, it would recurse to the next level, and you keep building up from there. So your set of chosen letters keeps growing, your set of remaining letters keeps shrinking, and basically, once you've used all the remaining letters, you have zero remaining letters, you're at a leaf node in your recursion tree, and you print the answer. And again, you'll hit 24 of those. So let's try to code it quickly. We have an empty implementation here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is create a static function uh, to help us out. Usually when you're doing recursion, you want a helper function. It's got to be static because we're invoking it out of main, which is static, and I don't feel like instantiating an object. It's good to call that out when you're in the situation. Uh, so public static void permute. So I'm going to call the string we pass in full, like the full remaining letters. Um, this is a helper function. We're just going to assert that there is a, something in the string. If uh, full equals equals null or full dot size length sorry equals zero, um, we'll just print system out print line. You need you must provide a string of length greater than zero. So it's always good to just check your preconditions when you're doing real code. Um, assuming everything went well, we're going to call the real permutation function. We're going to make this one private so you can't call it directly with unsafe code. And this will just take more arguments. We have the, we'll say a prefix and the full string. We'll call full remaining actually. So the idea here is we're going to have the prefix is going to be the letters we've already chosen, and the remaining is going to be the letters left to choose. We'll hop up here to our wrapper function and call the private one now. With uh, Initially we've chosen no letters, so prefix is null, empty, um, and remaining will be the full string. So um, as we said earlier, when we're out of remaining letters, we want to print our string. That's kind of our terminal condition for our recursion. So let's start out with that and get it out of the way. So it's good to do your terminal conditions first. So if remaining that size that length equals equals zero, we're gonna say um, system out print line and 
prefix. And we're going to return there. That we're done. We don't have to worry about moving on. So anyway, I apologize if the video jumped for a second there. My uh, power is running out on my laptop and I had to plug it in. But anyway, moving on. Um, now that we've done our terminal condition, we need to move on to actually processing the remaining characters. So we're going to make a for loop and say int i equals prefix that, no, equal i equals zero. i less than remaining that size length and i plus plus. So basically we want to cycle through each of the remaining characters and add it to our current prefix. So if we had no letters and remaining was a, b, c, d, then we'd be recursing with a and b and c and d. If we had a and b already, we'd be recursing with c and d respectively. So it keeps getting shorter basically. As, as remaining gets shorter, the levels of recursion they know. So anyway, let's take a look at this. We'll say permute. Um, we're going to say prefix plus remaining that care at i. So we're taking prefix plus the next character that we want. And our remaining has to get shorter then. So um, basically we need to choose all the characters around the one we just selected. So if it's zero, we just need everything from one on. If we chose two, then we need one and say three and four or everything past the index of the one we selected. So anyway, we need the string up to i, zero, remaining that substring zero i, and the substring after i. And with that, we should actually be pretty much done, I believe. So again, we run into our function. If we have no remaining letters, we print the full permutation that we've generated. Otherwise, we go through all the remaining letters and recurse one time for each possible letter. And that way, on each recursion, we're building up the set of letters we have by one in every direction possible. And the recursion call, again, is the word we've already started building plus the next possible letter. That's the new prefix. And the remaining letters is all of the remaining letters except for the one we just moved to the prefix. So hopefully that's starting to make a little sense. Let's try and run it and see if it actually works. Uh, to run it, we actually need to call it from main, though. So let's say permute. We definitely want to call the, the public one A, B, C, D. It's going to take a second to build. You can just see it down here. And hopefully we'll see 24 combinations. Should be six starting with each first letter. It's a good way to check it out. Just make sure you don't see any duplicates. Uh, here come the results. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. So we do have 24 results, and they're pretty clearly not duplicated. We could uh, shorten the results to get. If we go down to three letters, we'll just have six results. Three times two times one is six. It's a little easier to eyeball. But I like to start with four, because that'll let you spot a real error much more quickly in this case. So A, B, C, A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B, C, B, A. So that's the correct set of results, and uh, this is a pretty solid implementation now, because we have our uh, guard function for the uh, recursion that makes sure that we actually have valid input. 
and we have uh, our recursion working properly. The last thing you might want to work, worry about is uh, you should usually think about what people could do to mess with your implementation. Um, in this case, I don't think uh, the casing of anything would matter, so uh, this should be pretty solid now. Anyway, more of these will be coming, and uh, if you like the style of tutorial, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's also plenty of other things going on to there that are in different formats, and uh, thank you.